Welcome back to the channel everyone. Well, this is about the third time I've tried to film a video over <laughs> the last four weeks. I'll put you some footage up now of my last attempt. Oh, I went to um, the Roman fort at uh, Hardnock Pass in the lakes Give everything that gold and I thought, and clear blue sky, Struggle a little bit. it's uh, you can't you're right. the Roman ruins. I'll find something that will be worth, uh, worth videoing. Absolutely horrendous. My compositions were rank amateur <laughs> they were awful they were absolutely awful so i binned that video off and i thought because although i'll show failures on this channel i've got to have a little bit of self-respect with a bit of it and um if i put that out i think i would have pretty much lost it all so i didn't anyway on to today's video so i've come to a place called magpie mine which is in derbyshire and I've seen some photographs of this and I think I've got an idea in my head of a long exposure with the clouds streaming over its head probably black and white I'm going to do this video in two parts because my mate Lee about four weeks ago edited one of my photographs that I'd taken when I was up in Cumbria and it was absolutely unbelievable what he did with it and he showed me this video on YouTube about how he sharpens his photograph so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this bit in the field there, I'll find a few compositions, we'll take a few photographs as we normally do. But after that, I'm going to go back in the studio and just show you this trick on, on uh, Photoshop. Because it's absolutely unbelievable what it'll do. So anyway, I've got to the cattle grid now, where it looks like there's a bit of an electric fence across it. So I'll have to go through the gate. So I'll have to open the gate, and I'll catch you on the other side, and we can uh, have a look for the first composition. challenging this if I'm being honest. I need the cloud to be broken up for this to really work in the image that I've got in my own mind but I found a little composition here using uh, using this old looks like an old winch and it's quite nice I just need this cloud here to break up a bit and then hopefully I can get the streaks going across it so I'm an ISO 64 F16 now foolishly I've come here and I know because I've lost the back off my battery charger. I can't turn it off the uh, timer. I can't. I can't turn the timer off. It has no on-off button. So I've been taking the batteries out, turning one round to save the battery life so they don't just run down. And the last time I had the timer out, I've forgotten to um, turn the battery round. So the batteries are flat, which means that I'm limited now on to 30 seconds. That's the maximum shutter speed I can get out of it because I haven't got a timer. So. Not to worry because i've got the big stopper and the super stopper with me so effectively this is giving me about eight seconds and as you can probably hear there's quite a lot of wind noise so hopefully the clouds will be moving quite quick now looking over there they are but above my head it doesn't look like they are so i'm going to hang around but i've took a couple of test shots and i think it looks all right it looks quite quite mean so i'm hoping with this one it's going to be black and white dark sky on the top and then basically this sort of like metallic metal winch from yesteryear sat there proud it's all going to be a little bit industrial i think this video because i've come to an old mine so that's pretty much what you'd expect to photograph really well there are some lone trees that i fancy having a having a go at but compositionally i've had a couple of handhelds which i'll, I'll, I'll put them up now for you because i've just been trying to experiment with different bits and bobs i'm trying to take a selection of photographs so when we go back in the studio later on in the video I've got a bit to work with, I can show you the different different effects that this uh, this sharpening tool has, but 
I'll crack on, I'll take a couple of pictures here now and then uh, I'll, uh, I'll put them up if they're any good. So ISO 64, F16, 8 second exposure, boom, here we go. So I found another little composition here. This, uh, this cloud's breaking up, so I'm going to find something in a minute that hopefully is looking into the wind, so the cloud's going to blow over my head and give those streaky effects. But I just came across this other little winch here, and it took it's probably spent about 10 minutes trying to compose this, if I'm being honest, because what we're trying to do, that winch there, I wanted that as my main focal point, and I wasn't really bothered about, you can probably see, there's a building behind it, and there's a chimney as well. And I wanted to try and create a sense of depth, so what I've done is I've put the, the apertures at f2.8, so the winch is going to be in sharp focus, the chimney behind will be a little bit blurred, and I've blocked the building out with the winch. So, well I hope I have. <laughs> but the only worry I've got with this is that the chimney, if it, was, if it was too high, I've got the building in, so I couldn't get rid of the building. Now I'm low, I've got like a cut off with the hill to the chimney. So I'm hoping that with using an f2.8 aperture, it's going to be blurred. And if it isn't, I'll blur it a bit more in, in Photoshop when I get back. But it looks quite nice on, on camera. And just I'll show you, I'll let you have a little look at the, let you have a look at it. So you can see the, um, you can see the winch is the main focal. That house is blocked out completely by that big wheel. You've still got the chimney in. And then you've got the, uh, the trees next to it. Now, f2.8, it's going to be a shallow depth of field, so hopefully it's blurred. I've bumped the ISO up to 100 now because I wanted to try and get a faster shutter speed, so I'm at 1 200th of a second now to try and stop the grass moving, which is around the winch. Now it might need to be faster than that because it's quite strong this wind, but we'll see. I think I might do a long exposure of this because the cloud's broken up now. So get the big girl out, slap her on the front. See if we can get a 25 second exposure out of it and see what that looks like. So I'll put you back on when I find the next composition. I'll stick these images up now for you. This, uh, this light's absolutely incredible. This, these storm clouds that are coming in here, <laughs> they look so ominous and I don't want them to come this way but part of me does because it's going to be so mean and moody. I'm just rattling off a couple of shots here now. Um, I managed to get the, the 20 mil on. I've had to come step back a bit to try and get some of this drama in the clouds behind. I want the sunburst of the sun, so I'm shooting f16 and then I'm also dropping the aperture right down to so like an F2 or, or up rather to f2.8, f3.5 to because I'm not bothered about the background being blurry, not depth of field, not bothered. And I'll blend them both in Photoshop, but it just looks so ominous this. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. I love I love doing photography in these sort of conditions because it changes all the time and you find that you gotta keep thinking well what can I do, how do I get that to work, how can I get my shutter speed faster, how can I get my shutter speed slower, what happens if I put a filter on, should I use a port, it's just like, it's just, it's just wonderful isn't it, absolutely superb, so anyway, I'm going to rattle a couple more shots off, and I'll stick these up now, and I think, I'm going to sit tight then, let this blow over and try and find some shelter somewhere. <laughs> So, it's uh, freezing cold, that rain hasn't, it's not hit here yet, but it's on its way, so I'm doing one. 
I think we've got some decent you know, shots there to play with. But what a brilliant place! What a brilliant place! I'll put some um, I'll put some stuff in the uh, in the description about what this mine used to be and stuff like that. If you can find that information on it. But um, yeah, absolutely stunning. But like I said at the start of the video, I'm going to go back to the studio now, and I'll put you back on when I'm back sat down, and uh, I'll show you this. I'll show you this sharpening tool in Photoshop. It's dead easy to use, and I reckon there's a lot of professionals that are using this, and they're not telling you. <laughs> now I might be completely wrong. Maybe they just use the sharpening tool on 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 Lightroom with a mask. But this thing is um, it's serious serious kit. I mean, I, I'm using this pretty much on everything I do now. All my photographs I'm running through Photoshop and running this sharpening tool on. So, enough rambling. Let's walk that way and I'll see you when I'm in the studio. So, I'll tell you what, that's absolutely freezing in that place. <laughs> British summer, British summer. I'm not gonna dwell on this for a long time. I just think it's worth having a look at it because when I looked at it, I was like, wow, that's a, uh, that's pretty special and it's not the standard um, sharpening tool that you use on Photoshop so effectively if we dive in here I've got an image that I took on the day which which was in the early part of the video and effectively I've got the image of this nice chimney so what we do I'm in Lightroom at the moment I'm just literally going to click right and then edit in Photoshop and it'll it'll drop it into Photoshop I've got into this uh, this isn't a plug because I'm not sponsored <laughs> But this IPA punk is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so, anyway, it's going to open itself up in um, in in Photoshop when it finally decides it's going to do it. <clears throat> Once it's in here, we've got to turn it into a smart object. So, effectively, you need to, you need to control J. That's going to create a copy. And then, if you go into up here into in, uh, layer smart object convert to smart object. So that's going to convert that layer into a smart object. This is the high pass filter that we're going to look at today. This is this is what it is. So effectively that's converted that now to a, to a smart object into filter. And you can see you've got sharpening filters in there like sharp and sharpen edges, sharp and more, etc, etc. But this is this is the high pass filter. So it's in the other the other section. So high pass, select that. Now here you can see the radius, and that's basically going to adjust how much of it's going to how much of it it's going to affect. I less is more with this, less is more, and I tend to have it about 2.1, 2.3, something like that. You really notice the difference on this when you print. That's what that's what I found. You really notice the difference when you print. So 2.1, okay. Now you can see it doesn't it's just a grey screen. So effectively you've got to change this here now in where it says normal, change that to I usually use soft light. So soft light, and then we need to create a, a mask because it's applied to absolutely everything at the moment. So that icon there where it says add layer mask, if you hold down the alt key, click on that and it'll invert the mask. So now it's black. Come back over here, select the brush tool, make sure that white is on there. And then basically this is going to allow you then to, um, to effectively color where, where you want to sharpen. And the beauty of this system is that, say you've done this and you've, you've decided that you've over sharpened it, you can go back in and you can actually adjust the pixels again after you've coloured it, after you've done it, after you've shaded it all in. So once we've done that, you, on the screen it's probably not going to look like it's, um, it's made much of a difference, but I absolutely guarantee if you do this on your machine, it will make, just it's, it's massive. So... Do a few of the, tree, bit of the trees. You don't have to be massively accurate. Be as accurate as you want. You use that little white button, black box there to show you the white area is obviously the bit that is revealing black to conceal. So effectively, that's it. So once I've done that, you can basically go back up to up to file. I've done I, with this. I like to do all my localized edits and all my global edits in Lightroom, and then I'll throw it into Photoshop to do this as like the the final the final edit, just to make sure that I've got everything balanced because when you drop this into photoshop your settings for lightroom they're not they're not copied back over so make sure you've got your, your mix your, your mix <laughs> make sure you've got your your, uh, your image so you're happy with it before you drop it in and then literally i just save as comes in here tiff drop it into the folder that you uh that you want well, i think where i'm not sure where i was with this one i think it'd be new 
anyway we drop it there rename it whatever you want um it'll be it'll be magpie mill there we go magpie mine so you got the edit there drop it in save it there norm ibm boom and it's that easy and that that's the thing it, it's I, i'm absolutely convinced that there's a lot of people especially on like uh, social media that are using this filter this sort of high pass filter rather than the standard sharpening tools because the beauty of this is that one you can adjust it more or less when you've actually sharpened it if you want to if you've done too much you can take it off if you've not done enough you can do more but it's the fact that you can set up separate layers so if you've got a picture of say i don't know some water the video that i got sent by by lee was this water and he sharpened the the, the rocks underwater and then he would sharpen the mid ground but he wouldn't sharpen that as much and then he'd do the bit on the end and it's at the background and it's just it's incredible the fact that you can do these sort of three layers of sharpening whereas sort of the sharpening even with the mask tool in lightroom it's much more of a global global tool whereas this is absolutely pinpoint so i hope that's been i hope that's been useful i hope you enjoyed the, the bit where i was in the field um, and fingers crossed this weekend we'll be able to get out again if the weather permits and we'll see where we go but thanks very much for watching and as always if you like the content give us a thumbs up like subscribe do do whatever you, you normally do and until the next time i'll see you around <laughs>